Um, just weigh against, just still have to be slightly cautious once the blink timing's ready there for new. New for their part, um, the Sand King in this case, I think it's still pretty darn good, not only for the team fight, but again, it's another way to deal with Chrono. You channel that epicenter outside when the Chrono's up, you burrow strike in, you're still gonna get the stun, you're still gonna get the damage off. And that's just another spell that MG Trust will have to worry about. That's something Jackie has to be aware of, which means we might see a second item BKB here for the Void, just to be secure in the Chrono, which it's not the worst. At the same time, we've seen Voids forced to go BKB second item, and if you don't fight with a Chrono and you go second item BKB, you're not getting the maximum value from that item, so... We'll see what Jackie opts for here. If he will want that early magic resist, but new esports. Ooh, they're making it difficult, Mike. Like Gyrocopter is well coming out. So this this Chrono now is really a big double edged sword. It is. If, if you're if if you catch the gyro but not the Venged, swap is there. And then Gyro can throw his spells. Gyro can fight outside that Chrono. You've got Gyro Venge for added range and Gyrocopter. Yep. For whatever reason that gives it um, You've got that in play, so... Works with the flag it, cannon. Yeah, works with that flag, and it, it's just really oh, tricky now for MG Trust. Um, they've still got a good lineup. They have to play perfectly with the Chrono. A lot of pressure on Jackie this game to just be relentless. Every time Chrono's up, you got to smoke, you got to moonlight. Find even a single target pickoff and snowball that way. I still do like where Motivate's gone with this... Uh... With this draft, right? Like, I realize you've got Ben Gyro now. I don't necessarily think that's going to be the the strongest combination because the Gyrocopter. I mean, we've seen it a couple times. It it doesn't feel amazing. It it hasn't had any love from Ice Fog from a long time, and it's it's kind of just been left to to be itself in the corner. And once in a while, you see the Gyrocopter picked up, but it's. You know, it, it takes a lot of farm to get online. Still, it looks like new esports. They might run a mid wind ranger now to set the pace and obviously take, give the gyrocopter some space to just do what it loves doing, which is farming. Mm. Uh, we'll, we'll see the debut of the gyrocopter throughout the BTS Pro series. We'll see how effective it is going to be. Obviously, like like you said with the Venge, it's going to be more effective than it would have been mm -hmm. by itself, uh, perhaps. With the Venge, it is a lot more viable than it is by itself. And Motivate now. One more pickup. It looks like they're lacking a Maceros hero in the offlane. Unless they are going to run a pause 3 snap fire, which I, I kind of doubt. I think mm -hmm. it should be something very different for Maceros. And Well, you pointed out the tide, John. It is still there. Yeah. Would be, would be pretty good here. You know, it gives you setup for the Chrono, gives you follow-up for the Chrono. Laning isn't the most amazing. Like, against a Gyrocopter, that's already a ranged hero. You're probably not going to pressure it as much as you'd want, and that might just be what Motivate Trust is looking for. It's also an additional cooldown, and we already talked about the reliance on Chrono. You would be piling on a timer on your team to try to maximize. Uh, you know, it's, it, it makes it a little bit more, you know, tight. The execution has to be really tight if they do go with that Master S Tide, but, you know, that's something MG Trust has been super comfy with. They do go with the Abaddon in this game. Uh, not quite sure entirely why. There's not much to break, maybe preventing the Shackle from having as much impact as before. It's going to be the big one. Uh, taking off Fire Spirits, I guess, is really good here for Master so they can focus on the Egg as needed. Um, beyond that, you could be a bit annoying in the offlane. We'll see how much Masteros does force that out. Of course, it is going to be the DDZ Wind Ranger, as you mentioned. So it's going to be a core wind down mid up against Fearless's Ember. I think Fearless should have a better time here. Um, he can block out the power shots with his shield. He can clear out the wave just fine. Level 6 timing, very important. And he just needs to watch Shackle plays. We've seen a lot of big wins come out in the last game from Barry. DDZ is going to try to set his eyes there to get that control and a better draft here for MG Trust, but new esports are looking pretty sharp too. We'll have to see what Yamate does with that gyro. Yeah, we will. It should be a very, very fun match between these two. And I do like this, uh, this Motivate Trust draft definitely a bit better than the, uh, the last draft we saw for sure, but 
just a matter of whether they can make these big ultis work. Like, it's it's going to be important for Jackie to land these big chronos, which I'm sure he will, because uh, we have seen him on the void quite a few times. He, he does do some very good work. And more importantly, Fearless can't have a bad lane again. That, mm. that, that game won, Fearless lost his lane very, very hard, and the game fell apart. I think it's less reliant on the Ember than, say, it was the Storm from game one. Uh, this game number two for the side of Motivate Trust. But if you lose mid again, and you have to spend the whole game catching up, I, I just don't know about it. I feel like new esports will just take over if that happens. Uh, definitely. Uh, that is that's something on Fearless. There's that pressure to just make the mid lane matchup work. Wind Ranger, again, I don't think it's the worst situation for Ember. You can play around with your Flame Guard. You can maybe dodge out some spells with a Slide of Fist. So there's a, there's a level of reaction time that's going to come into play. A level of pure mechanical skill in that matchup. So it should be a bit better for Fearless. Uh, I want to see what he does at level 6, level 7. Like, those early rotations have to pay off. We saw in game number 1, his Storm rotations just didn't lead to the kills they were looking for and he needs to buy that space he 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 is going to be the active hero when while jackie doesn't have chrono and considering that cooldown it's not chrono is not up that much in a game it's true 30 seconds and counting keep an eye on yamate as well see how fast he can get the farm up on the gyrocopter again it's been one of those position ones that has just been forgotten about for a very long time and it just hasn't really been popping up very often at all see what they can uh they can do here with this hero of course it is still as strong as any other hero if you can get the farm up but it's just all about getting a few core items before you can really get involved uh we'll see how yamate does do i mean in terms of his farming he has been doing a great old job as of late uh if he can replicate his performance from game one he should be pretty happy yeah, and again, he's got this laning duo with Mosin on the Venge. So he gets a little bit more range, gets a pretty good support to try and trade hits. So Mosin, of course, going to be playing with a wave of terror early, getting right clicks off. Masaros. Abaddon early on is not the tankiest beast. So he's going to have to balance out his use of the Aphotic Shield and the Miscoil. We'll see if he'll opt to level a. Uh, value point in the curse. I don't think you're gonna get the opportunity to get up and up close and personal to maximize early curses. But you know, with this kind of lane Q, Anat Marana just stands back. You get the range creep every single wave. You just get that exp flowing. You do. Uh, see how Masteros can do on this Abaddon up at this top lane. Abaddon, one of those heroes that can really snowball out of control if you're not too careful. Of course, mid lane, DDZ and Fearless going to be up against each other once again. They will not be on the Storm Tiny this time, but rather the Ember Wind Ranger. Uh, so far, very nice start for DDZ. Looks like he has taken the uh, small CS lead, but it's the Wind Ranger. It's very easy to secure CS with Power Shot. Uh, could be a bit hard for Fearless to really try and overtake the lane, and that's actually a very nice deny from DDZ on the range creep. And you don't want to lose those if you're fearless. You do need that XP. Yeah, it's the it's the improved damage swing for Wind Ranger that really makes it easier to, to kind of make plays like that. It used to be a bit trickier, but... Mm -hmm. Top lane. Q does end up getting first blood. Mose in the first one to go down on the Venge. Looks like they were just diving the T1 tower, which is another thing you can do with the Abaddon. Uh, Photic Shield makes it very, very easy to just get underneath that T1 tower and dish out the damage you require. Yeah, that's a bit surprising, allowing that aggressive move to be out. Like, even this level 2 curse for Masaros, you'd expect that he wouldn't find the opportunity to gap close, but if you do get the hits off, then that damage piles on, the slow starts to be annoying, the silence starts to hurt. And new esports, and this is the one lane they can't afford to really lose out. The gyro needs to be off to a running start. Yamate is finding farm, so as long as he's finding farm, I think Mosin's fine. You have to be careful about feeding an Abaddon. You know, you don't want that here to grow big. You compare that to your off lane here. Candy Loon on the opposite side of the map with Barry on the Sand King Phoenix. They are up against the Faces Void and that Snapfire. 
And there's some potency there. It is pretty much a steady farming lane. Candy did go for the 1-1 build, so no point in cost it, which means he can't shove the waves as hard. Well, they try to go on to Candy Loon now, but he does borrow a strike away. Of course, it will be difficult to, uh, to get much damage onto the Sand King while Barry is around with those Fire Spirits. It's going to be very annoying for Jackie to get any, any harass out while, while those Fire Spirits are around from Barry. So you do also have Boom Bell there with the Scatter Blast, which can be quite effective. But it does seem like Candy Loon have a decent enough time behind his Tier 1 tower. Just getting some CS off on that Sand King. And on the brighter side for Jackie, he is also farming extremely well on that Void. Not really being contested and that's going to be a good feeling here for Motivate. Yeah, it's about a creep wave of a lead for Jackie compared to Yamate. So it's going to be a slightly earlier start to his power threads into that Mask of Madness. And, you know, to face this Void, if you get that easy ramp into the Mom, you can really accelerate your farm, up your damage into Chrono. And that's a key factor for MG Trust, just getting Jackie a good start, just as important as new esports needs to get Yamate up. Fearless gonna try for that haste rune, but Barry is gonna be able to pick it up, and that really sucks for Fearless as now. He's probably dead shot. Barry's just gonna chase him down, Ooh. and that is a great power Boy. shot from DDZ. Oh, what an absolute sniper. DDZ from a mile away, getting the kill and I don't mean to call it early, but that's probably your mid lane loss, John. DDZ is already way oh. too far ahead in CS and now getting a kill. At least, though, top lane, Maceros does manage to kill off the Venge. And bottom lane, Candyloon's going to be in a bit of danger as Jackie is starting to get aggressive here on this Void. Does manage to also get the off lane Sanki. So the mid lane's not going well, but the side lanes are going very well for Motivate. Yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting back and forth. The Sand King being slowed down is pretty big because we've seen Sand King's lag behind. It takes a while. It takes a lot of jungle space to catch up. Jungle space that you're going to be sharing with a gyro. So there's not much of that space to share out. And new esports, I think, up top. Again, they're fine with Mosin dying as long as Yamate farms. He is still up there in last hits. And he, has, he hasn't died. So the gyro still making steady pace. Overall, it's, it's fairly even. There is a slight net root lead now, though, for MG Trust. And new esports, they're still slowly ramping up. I'd say for MG Trust, Fearless being a level behind DDZ is worrying. And he did have those deaths, but you know, you've got the Focus Fire ready to go. If you find a good Shackles opportunity, you could find yourself in trouble. Almost. Top lane was in danger again, but Yamate gonna try and protect him by getting forward with that Rocket Barrage. Masteros just gonna chase down. Yamate for a bit, but the arrow is not going to land out from Q. By the way, those five-minute bounty runes, John, they... Oh, actually, mid lane, Fearless, he's in big trouble. Oh, DDZ is out-leveling by two levels now. Mm. Level yeah. 7 to level 5. That is very, very rough, and DDZ has also just got just about double the last hits. But once again, top lane is going very badly. For new esports, they do lose Mosin a third time. Yeah, it's a trade-off here for new. Like they're they're losing their Venge, but they're buying a lot of space mid. They're still keeping Yamate alive through that onslaught. And you look at the ADZ, not only he's is he two levels above Mike, he's he's got two null talismans, he's got the javelin. Oh His God. right click with focus fire is just way too much. Yeah, yes it is. Uh, luckily now Fearless does hit the level six mark, so he's gonna feel a little bit safer, but I can't say the same thing for the other people on the map. With that Javelin up, anyone is killable now for DDZ, apart from the Ember and maybe the Void. Uh, nobody else is really safe. As time goes on, he's going to work towards that MKB rush, and that's going to make matters a hell of a lot worse. But we'll see what DDZ does do in terms of rotations. It's new esports, they'll just take it easy for now, just trust in that mid wind ranger to start applying pressure and... Well, speaking of pressure, Mosin is going to show up now at the bot lane, and it looks like they want to start trying to get some damage off onto that T1 tower. Maybe even get a kill here, but Boombell is going to run straight into Mosin and scout him out. Mosin will get a bit of damage off, but ultimately Boombell will be okay. And you have to be cautious here. There's a Chrono ready to go on Jackie. If he's feeling it, he might just commit. Well, he's thinking about it. 
bit more damage and he probably will just throw it out. Ozen, gonna try and walk away. Jackie just gonna time walk forward, gets the bashes and will just hold out. Now Candy Loon is in trouble. He just used his burrow strike, so he's got nowhere to go but the graveyard, and that is exactly where he does go. It's also a nice rotation out from Fearless, helping set up a double kill for Jackie. And even top lane, Barry just can't survive Maceros on the Abaddon. He'll also drop. Yeah, it's a good look for MG Trust. Those are big kills for them to get. Fearless, of course. On the Ember can be all over the map, and this fits his playstyle a lot more. It's low commitment rotations. Finding his snowball to start this way is going to help out massively. He's still pretty far behind in farm, but they are starting to play some catch up here. They get a free tower up top as, up top as well for MG Trust. So 7-2, to two, 3k lead. It's starting to pile on. New, you know, they need to... They need to find that initial farm. You look at Yamate, like he hasn't died, yes, but his farm is pretty far behind. Q is right on his tail, and that's a support Mirana that's almost matching your core gyro. That's not a very good look for that gyro copy. Now that is very problematic. Speaking of problematic, bot lane, Jackie gonna commit the chrono, and that's gonna be Candyloon probably dying. He misses the burrow strike, and Fearless was there just in case. But Jackie will be the one to take another kill now. And he is 4 and 0 on that void. That is a real problem for new esports. As they are, again, having a good time in mid, but their side lanes are completely ruined. They're going for more. Yamate getting caught by the chains and the arrow. He's gone. He'll try and call down, but he is definitely dead. They'll try and trade Jackie, but he's going to be able to time walk out of there. The only person they could get was Boom Bell on the snap fire, but that's your pause 5 snap. He doesn't care about dying. No. It's, it's not a bad trade. They even have the Moonlight. They might find an opportunity if you're not careful. Fearless is going to come back in with the chains now, looking for some revenge here onto DDZ, but they don't have the Chrono, so this is a very dangerous team fight for Motivate to take. They do try and go after Mosin, but now they'll realize there's too many heroes. And, well, there is going to be a focus fire coming out onto Fearless. Luckily for him, the stuns weren't long enough, but now a homing missile is going to follow him up with Barry coming in with the egg. He's just getting ganked by all sides, but there goes your Phoenix egg. Boom Bell, he'll take care of it, and poor old Mosin is going to get stunned up by the cookie and is going to end up dying to Q on the Marana. Oh man, MG Trust just finding their step here in game number two. Masteros, he is just ready to go. He doesn't have any major item pickups yet, but he's at level eight. He's pocketing his borrowed time. So that's ready to go off at any single moment. And that just gives him so much more opportunities to be aggressive. We're seeing the weakness of new esports draft. That Phoenix early on, right? Being countered hard by Boom Bell. And, you know, level one little shredder. That's all you need to really take out the egg, so have to be a bit cautious when you do commit the egg. We don't even see an epicenter ready to go from Candy. He is, of course, opting for the Burrow Strike and Sandstorm first for farm and laning presence. Without the epicenter, though, that does take away your AoE damage in conjunction. You have to be a bit cautious. Oh, Fearless. Caught out by the shackles, but he's going to be fine. It's like DDZ wants to try and set up Oh, that bot T1 tower. It's going to be a bit of a slow process, DDZ. He will eventually just commit the focus fire for it and should be able to clean up. Fearless, I don't think he wants to really jump in here. He'll just throw a casual chains and remnant away. And he won't mind anyway, because they're taking the mid T1, which is just that much more valuable. New esports, they have to come back and defend this. They're going to try. Maceros chains out with the arrow follow-up and... Oof, that's a very low sand king. Q will literally just walk in and hit him once. And with that kill, Masteros happy to go back in. We'll be able to clean up the mid tier one. New esports cannot defend. No, it's a big loss for them. Their jungle opens up wide now. Top and mid tier one's gone. That top jungle, they've got some nice wards here. Jackie's farming it up for himself. He's got the Mask of Madness on that face's void. They've got the Chrono ready. MG Trust could easily fortify it out now if they wanted to. New esports. And they've got the egg ready to go. It's just, again, they don't have the combinations with the egg to really maximize it. They're just going to sit back, 
They've got some stacks for Yamate to take. He's already got the drums and the gyrocopter, but he's going to need a little bit more. He's got level 9 up and running as well. If you find a good opening, you could make a play, but it's a bit surprising. You know, we saw DDZ run away at the start in the lane. He hasn't made that oh, runaway start lane. into anything. There's your chrono. Jackie not going to hold on to it, and Candloon is just going to die. Had a nice amount of follow-up damage there from Boom Bell with the snap fire, and that's what you want to see out of your Void. You just don't want to see Voids holding Chrono for 20 minutes. Every time they can get a kill, you just use it and take the kill. Yeah, it's it's perfectly played there from Jackie. Just constant aggression, and that's really what you're looking for on MG Trust side. No downtime, no no room to farm, no room to breed for new esports. So every single time they're buying Yamate space, it's super costly. And again, we haven't seen DDZ transition that good start into anything meaningful with that Wind Ranger. MKB is almost done, but it hasn't really contributed enough top. Well, get the Phoenix up top lane. He's uh, out of the map uh, and on the other side. Perfect. Beautiful. Meanwhile, top, oh. Candy Loot going to go for a burrow and bail on to Jackie with the focus fire from DDZ, but they can't keep up with the Void. So instead, they'll turn their attention to Q, but he's going to have an aphotic shield out from Maceros. And now they'll turn back around onto Candy Loon. There's your egg, but Boom Bell is looking to just burst it down, and he does. At least they do get one, but it's going to be a complete wipe if they're not careful. New Esports, they might need to back off right now. MG Trust, they are looking way too powerful at the moment. And they'll get a bit of damage out. Barry going to go for a dive in. Cool. It's a nice shackles out from DDZ, but it's an Abaddon jump. Masteros can just aphotic shield and run. And he doesn't even need to shield. He'll just run. In fact... Well, Q does at least go down Ooh. to Yamate, but now he doesn't want to lose his life for this. He'll drop the call down. Maseros pops the borrowed time and just keeps going after that gyrocopter. So Jackie, he'll join in, but I don't believe they have the damage right now. They might need to just back out of there. Maseros will get stunned up. Now a cookie forward, another aphotic shield, but the shackles will be out and DDZ will be able to get the kill. They do manage to barely turn it back around, but Jackie, he's not done. He wants to go back in. Still, Chrono's going to be back up in 20 seconds. This is how long this fight's been going. There's a smack by Kisses flying out. DDZ still wanting to fight, but needs to back off as it is raining fire on the Wind Ranger. Jackie back in. 10 seconds for Chrono. Oh. There's a double chains out. A nice shackles, but it's not going to matter. MD Trust just won't stop. And while it looks good for a second there for New, it ends up being pretty bad in the end. I mean, that's a dieback on Barry and the Phoenix in his rush to help out. And you mentioned how long it was. There's that Chrono ready to go now for Jackie. So they could easily bowling just bowling. reset, look for another bowling fight, bowling. and try again. New Esports, they cannot keep playing this game. Yamate still needs a lot of farm beyond those drums. He's, he's making some decent progress in that jungle, you know, he's not too far behind in that fourth. Neither is DDZ for that matter, but it doesn't feel impactful. DDZ has the MKB, he needs a blink. They, they need that blink in the Wind Ranger just to jump in, get these fights started. It's either the Wind Ranger or the Sand King. And once you have one of those initiation tools, I think you're going to be a lot happier on the side of the esports. There's your call down out from Yamate, just trying to clear the creep wave in that mid lane. Man, he is really... What's he going to buy? He's got 3.7k. Just has the drums there, and he hasn't really made the decision yet, it seems. Mm. Okay. Okay, MKB. MKB. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I thought it might be the, the general ags that we always see from these core mm -hmm. gyros, but... Well, he feels like he needs the damage, and I, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. He is lacking damage. Yeah, I don't think durability is the issue, so if you go Ags, it's like a mix of durability and damage. But in this case, you don't need the durability. You absolutely need more right click. MKG is going to be helping out. It also preempts a butterfly pickups or maybe a Radiance pickup if they thought Fearless was going greedy. Not the case. It's going to be an Ags for Ember as well. But it does cover your bases here. So you've got the Demon Edge up. A little bit more right click flying out. The top tier 2 though is being sieged. You only really have Barry for the defense once more. 
Fortify is expended. That does open up some opportunities up. Deluxe bot. New esports trying to trade. You've got DDZ. Focus fire isn't up, but with Avenge, this process is a bit faster for you if you want it to be. They're just going to focus it down with Masteros and Jackie. Of course, Curse of Avernus is going to work on the uh, tier 2 tower. And it's going to make it a much easier process for Jackie on that void. Who, by the way, is also working towards an MKB now. Just went for the BKB first and... Oh, has a double damage rune, so might go for the Roshan play. And why the hell not? It's just yeah. it's so Perfect. simple. It's all you could ask for. Into that pit. New esports. No wards around our area. Wait, they, you actually have one, but it's not spotting below that ramp. It's going to be a very fast rush. The scan is there, but they're way too far out. It just melts way too quickly with that DD. There's that second life. So Jackie has more room, uh, more choices for when to drop that Chrono. Can drop it in the first life, wait for it, him to die first, then follow up with the Chrono. A lot of options. You've got a pipe up and running on Maseros. So you're, you're going to be able to eat through the damage of the Sand King, of the Gyro. Even the Phoenix, not going to burn you as hard. It's all kind of just lining up here for MG Trust. Jackie, I run into Mosin. They've left the, uh, the Vengeful Spirit to die on her own, and even Fearless killing off Barry at the top lane. Just got him to that point now where the cause of Motivate Trust can just pretty much kill anyone they want to. Uh, there's not much they can do about it, and speaking of, Yamate needs to be very cautious as they have his number. Fearless, he's popped the drums, or rather not, it was Yamate just trying to pop the drums to run away. Does make it to the high ground. There is still a 6k net worth lead for Motivate, and there's still plenty of towers to be taken for him as Shackles gonna be thrown out. Fearless just body blocking. Candy Loon's gonna jump in but misses the burrow. Uh, well, they'll get the TP's bit, and that'll be it. They're just happy to retreat. Yeah, uh, no major rush. MG Trust still hold on to the Aegis. They're not quite in position to fully maximize Jackie, perhaps waiting for that MKB first. And just kind of forcing Mew in an awkward position, although there are TPs down bot. Yeah, Maseros, he's not gonna die. I mean, he's got no tower, so maybe? He's got bro time. Focus fire. Okay, his team is trying to join up with him. He's got one charges. They're gonna burrow strike him up. Focus fire, Masaros still alive, does eventually die, but now Jackie gets in there with the Chrono, and he's got DDZ. A nice swap out, however, from Mosin, saving the life of his Wind Ranger, and they do also get the Aegis of the Void, but they have lost too. A double kill out for Boom Bell, and they want more. They're after Yamate now, who's gonna try and man fight this one. Jackie's actually the one falling quite low with the stuns flying out, and the power Ooh. shot. They do kill off Jackie. It's a great team fight out from New Esports. Oh, Seems man, like MG Trust, it? they just couldn't get it done. You've got to be careful about that magic damage coming out here. If you don't have the Abaddon around with a pipe, you cannot tank through that damage. And losing Maseros is what enabled New Esports to go in. Their magic damage was suddenly there. Their control wasn't being purged off. If New Esports continuously punish Maseros for overstepping, the 4v5 for MG Trust gets a bit more difficult. You know, they, they lose more opportunities. They lose a lot of durability. And Masaros has to be very careful with his positioning. Doesn't want to overextend that much in this game. He does not. Yamate with that, uh, that MKB up now is hitting so much harder. He was actually able to fight back with Jackie. Jackie yet to pick up the MKB of his own. Still needs that demon edge. Had he had that MKB, he probably would have killed off that Wind Ranger much, much faster. And that fight could have been a whole lot different. G Trust. No need to wait out Jackie just a little bit longer. That is also going to give time for Yamate to get another item up. And speaking of another item, he's got 2.7k in the bank account now. Still nothing queued up, but you'd imagine at some point he must be going for the Aghanim Scepter. And this could be the time. Yeah, it's a good time for it. You've already got one DPS item up.
So now you can stack on the durability, and we saw him survive, barely survive. If he gets the Ags, it's going to be easier for him to stand in front, easier for him to last true, and do the damage he needs. However, you've got this Ags up for Fearless, so he has more remnants, more range, more damage. It is something to watch out for, and MG Trust are going to try to reveal it with a smoke. They will. Still may have been worth waiting for Chrono, it's 15 seconds away. They are a bit early, but they're going to remnant in with Fearless, Mosin. He'll just get a swap out on Yamate, and Yamate will keep it the call down. Jackie just wrapping around here, waiting for the Chrono, but he'll jump in onto Yamate. They'll cancel the TP. Mosin probably to drop, and Yamate, he just dies to Fearless. In fact, Q even killing off Barry on the Phoenix. Apparently, they don't need the Chrono. Yeah, the new esports were split up really well. There was no opportunity for the Chrono, but when they do break up, when they don't have the follow-up stun from Candy Loon, and they don't manage to commit, say, the Egg and the Epicenter on top, it, it is dicey. So they lose out in a nice fight there, coming out from MG Trust. They take that bot tier one. They start to set their sights onto these remaining tier twos. They want to start clearing out the map control, start really keeping new esports in their base, I'm going to need to clear the objectives to make that happen. That tier 2 mid tower, not going to last very long. Candyloon can't really do much on the Sanking to stop this. Going to have to watch it go down and the pings are already coming out for that bottom tier 2 tower now. And we'll just start getting to work as... You look back at Yamate, he's trying to finish off a BKB to... And deal with this side of Motivate. Of course, Fearless has been a big thorn in Yamate's side. They still need a way to defend this tier 2 tower, but oh, they're going to smoke up. They're going to give it a shot. Only problem being, they have just got All the right. MKB up on Jackie, and he's going to be able to get a Chrono. No, the Barra Strike is there in time. Jackie's still moving forward, does get stunned up again. He's going to turn back around onto Candy Look. Still no Chrono, Jackie. He's losing too much HP! What? He gets the Chrono off, but there's nobody to capitalize off it. He didn't oh. time walk. DDZ, he was focus firing him with an MKB and he underestimated the damage output. They'll keep going for the fight. Mosin about to fall. The egg will get bursted by Boom Bill. And now Fearless, he'll keep moving onto DDZ. But they don't have the chains to lock him down, so instead they'll turn around onto Yamate. Chains do not connect, however. And somehow motivate still win that team fight, even without that uh, without that void. The new esports they've got to feel a bit bad about this one. How do they win four v five? It's it's a it's a tough one. They need to commit that epicenter. There's been a lot of patience from Candy Loon and finding those opportunities. I don't think they can play it reactive. They have to be the aggressors here. We see that work out for them best. And if you can. If you can just jump in with the Epicenter Burrow Strike, that just relieves a lot of pressure from DDZ to get a good Shackles off the hill. Chains out with the Monimus Kisses flying into BDZ and he's taking so much damage, but Mosin will save the day. It's going to cost him his own life, however. The life of a Vengeful Spirit and now Jackie back in without the Chrono, but just jumping. Great chains out from Fearless and they are going to burst down two more. And Jackie with that BKB wanted to go for more, but... He will think better of it. Maybe now, however, Yamate, he was a bit far forward. Masteros will get started. Yamate pops the BKB, but the bashes are still going to go through it. And Jackie does kill him off. And there is no buyback available on Yamate. That's a big one. That's the kill they're looking for. There's still an option to play with the Epicenter for Candy Loon, but the lim options are limited. Like, BDZ can only do so much solo. The cooldown on Focus Fire now, with the changes, of course, in how you build and what the Ags does, means that you're not able to just constantly spam it. And that just means that there's so many opportunities here for MG to just siege away. There's nothing to stop. No, there is not. MG Trust, they'll take the first racks of the game and they look to back out. No need to rush this. Of course, there was about 20 seconds left for Yamate to, to come back into this, but... It's going to be a bit too short for them to really try and take another another barracks. 
I mean, they could always just wait out the next Roshan. In fact, it's already up. So, it's about yeah, that, that time. That'd be perfect. Just go right in. And new esports right now. They don't have any wards watching that pit. So, it's going to be a straightforward take. And this is not an objective they can allow it to slip away. They've lost their outpost as well. There's not going to be any TP points. They're going to have to really be aware of that pit somehow. I'd say a ward would be really good, but they just can't get in position. And there's those pinks. MG Trust straight into that pit. With the damage you have on Jackie right now, there's just there's no reason not to. He hits so hard. And, uh, it's going to be a very easy Roshan take. Even the Moonlight Shadow out now, just, just in case. Uh, nobody is coming from new esports. I mean, they've smoked up, but they're not going to make it in time. Roshan's down. Jackie will take the Aegis and Cheese will go to Maceros, making him that much harder to kill and they'll smoke into that mid lane. Jackie trying to bait for his team, but it's very obvious and now the remnants Ooh. fall. They want to get the chains off from Fearless and they got two with a great chrono out from Jackie. He caught two again. They're going to take down Mosin. There goes DDZ and there goes Barry. Yamate's left behind. He's trying to find a great Burrow Epi out, but it means nothing. They just don't have the damage. It just doesn't matter. Jackie on a triple kill. This game it really starts to look to be over now. They're going to buy it back, but this should be the last team fight. They've got the egg. If they can somehow somehow pull a miracle play with Barry, that is that is it. They don't have Epicenter. They don't have Yamate for a long time. There's a lot of work they have to put in if they have any hopes of stopping this push. Nice shackle out. That'll delay things here from DDZ. DDZ didn't really go for the, uh, the cooldown talent at level 10, so... He's got to wait a bit longer for that shackle. It's up back up towards that top lane. Dota Plus is sitting at 99% right now for Motivate. Mm. I'd say that's fairly accurate. As Jackie going to jump back in and Mosin. He's already been picked off. He has buyback, but he's going to have to commit straight away. And he will. They have the full team up. They have most ulties up apart from the epicenter. Barry going to jump in straight away with the egg and now Candy with a great burrow out but the egg is focused down too fast. Yamate, he's taking too much damage again from Jackie and he's gone. DDZ, he's not dealing enough damage anymore. The control is just not there from New Esports and this series will end in a draw. As Motivate Trust, they do take the second game and the GG has been called. Yeah, they correct the issues in their draft from game one. They give Fearless a hero he can play early on. You know, the, the, he didn't have the best of times up against uh, that mid coming out there from New Esports. DDZ was doing a fantastic job in Wind Ranger early on, but it wasn't enough. Fearless, he started going to other lanes. He started exploiting the weaker side lanes, found early kills. Jackie, no hesitation on those Chronos. And new esports for this draft, it just it just took too much more effort. You know, it took it needs so much more coordination to get the burrow epi with the egg on top, with a perfect positioning from your gyrocopter away from the chrono. It it just asked a lot more from them as a team, and it didn't pay off. So MG Trust do get out with a drawn series, kind of just uh putting a putting a bit of a morale boost for them instead of going zero two. Uh, it's a draw to start us off with here. It is, and John, that does mean we get to go into arguably the most hype series today. Mm -mm -mm. And a lot oh, of people yeah. were very excited about this over the past couple of days. I've been reading chat a bit when we are in the breaks. Among Us are going to be up against definitely the top team in SCA right now, which is TNC. Uh, they've proven that from the last tournament, and they're at the top of the groups as we speak. So... TNC versing Among Us coming up next. It's probably going to be about a 10-15 minute wait, but you'll see the timer on the screen. And we'll see you again very soon once that second uh, series is up and started. See you then.